Roll call, please. Thank you. Roll call. I guess I should listen to my own directions, right? <laughs> uh, Chair Edwards? Here. Commission members Ball? Here. And Mendoza? Here. And let it be known that Vice Chair Morse is absent today. Thank you. Uh, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. Commission member Mendoza. All, disc <clears throat> all discretionary actions before the Historic Preservation Commission are advisory in nature and final actions will be confirmed, modified, or deleted by the City Council. Public comments. This is the time persons viewing or wishing, not, wishing to address the Historic Preservation Commission regarding matters not on the agenda may be heard via an email sent to the Deputy City Clerk. Do we have any emails? I have not received any comments. Oh, thank you. Um, all items listed under consent items are considered to be routine and may be acted, enacted by one motion. Prior to the motion to consider any action by the Historic Preservation Commission, any public comments on any of the consent items will be heard. There will be no separate action unless members of the commission or the audience request specific items to be removed from the consent items. Items removed from the consent calendar will be separately considered under item number three of the agenda. Are there any items to be pulled? No public requests. And no public requests. And We're going to, uh, do we have to approve the minutes from last month? Both sets of minutes are there within the consent item, so you're approving the consent item as a whole. That includes both sets of minutes. Okay, I'm lost. Okay. Uh, if none are pulled, continue to agenda four. Uh, order of presentation for discussion. I'm sorry, can we get an approval for the consent item first, please, before you move on? Sorry, I don't see, I didn't see it, I'm sorry. The minutes at the top of the agenda. 3A. 3A. Or 2A, I'm sorry, 2A at the top of the page, Historic Preservation Regular Meeting Minutes for July 14th and Special Meeting of August 4. Why am I not seeing this? Which agenda are Here's you looking your, at? This isn't the right. Oh, right here. She, no, if you have the, the chair's agenda that I give you. Oh, uh -huh. it's different. It's at the very top of second page, A. Okay, so item two. A at the top. So turn it over to A right here. Historical Preservation Commission regular meeting. Oh, you know why? Because it wasn't in red. Yeah. Just. Um, oh, well, because that, that's just an item number. Sorry about that. Historic Preservation Commission regular meeting minutes for July 14th, 2020, and special meeting of August 4th, 2020. Uh, recommendation, recommended action approval. Uh, do I have a motion to approve those meetings, uh, minutes from those meetings? All motion. A second. Yeah. Oh, oh, roll call. All righty, so we have a motion a second to approve both sets of minutes under consent item. Roll call, Chair Edwards? Yes. Commission member Ball? Yes. And Mendoza? Yes. Thank you, motion passed 301. Thank you, sorry about that. That's okay. Okay. Continued discussion item. Order presentation for discussion items. Staff report presentation. Is that you, Roger? Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Uh, as you call it, your March meeting, the commission began exploring a, a new official name for the space at the, at the community center that now houses the, uh, the Norco Historic Collection. Uh, today's uh, staff report provides some, just a few sample uh, names that might uh, stimulate this, your imagination. Um, you're free to select from one of those or uh, anything that, uh, that you, um, you feel strongly about. So I'll just um, pass it back to you, Madam Chair, and you can, um, you can uh, lead a discussion on this. Mm, okay. Um, my deal, I think, and tell me what you think. I respect the fact that it's Bob and Carlene Allen, but to me it's, not, it's misleading because Bob and Carlene Allen have nothing to do with Norco history. Bob and Carlene Allen Heritage Room sounds like they were somehow connected to the Heritage Room. So. Can I say something? Can of I course. Say, um, so thinking about that, Terry, there are a lot of things in Norco that are named after other people like Riley's Gym, George Ingalls Equestrian Center, um, the Rex Clark, well, Rex Clark building was Rex Clark's building, but um, <clears throat> when I was first thinking about it, I was thinking that it did seem misleading because it does sound like someone else's history room, but in the same hand, it goes along with what Norco does because they mm. do name a lot of things after um, historical people in town. And I would like to know what the, what is the importance of changing its name or what is the um, point behind changing its name? Well, before we get into that, if I could just kind of yeah. piggyback on Sorry, what, um, uh, what Commissioner Ball said. So the, unfortunately, the, the Bob and Carlene Allen portion is not negotiable. Mm -hmm. That part we, we have to live with, even if you don't, uh, I understand there may not be an immediate connection between the Allens and, um, and what uh, the commission uh, is currently doing with the, with the collection. But that part has to stay. So, okay. um, but it's the rest of it that you have total liberty with. Okay, I, I totally get your point. I understand how. Now that you explain it that way, it makes sense. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, the other part of the name, a couple of suggestions here I'd, I'd like to address, and that is, uh, I would suggest that you drop the term archives. Uh -huh. This is more, archives is an important part of this, but it's only a part. Uh -huh. It's just more history, it's, uh, you know, displays, it's a, a number of things that are broader than archives. Yeah. And while I appreciate the fact that uh, we note the archives, I don't think it does us any good to have that in the title when the uh, scope of what we have and the mission that we are working within is broader than that. Right. Okay. Well, and then also, um, I'm, I, I'm new, new. I'm pretty new. He's new. <laughs> so, um, That's okay. I feel like with the name change, because all of the... Huh? Yeah, yeah. All of the um, the name changes are so similar. Um, I, I'm just, if there isn't like a definite significance in changing it right now, I think we should just leave it alone until, if we have a, a mission that correlates with the name change in the future, we could do it. But it's just so minute indifference. I don't, unless there's some impeding rush on changing it. I don't know why we don't just leave it the same. Of course, you will always have the opportunity to bring it back at any time mm -hmm. if you choose to defer it. Mm -hmm. I right. just hate to rush if we don't have something that we love. Okay. Um, does anybody have any comments? Okay. I'll, I'll just say that um, because we've been there five years and we've sort of come to love it as, know and love it as the Heritage Room. Um, and because we have exhibits and we've already had some exhibits and we've already had some, you know, outreach to say, hey, come, the Heritage Room, Heritage Room. 
I think we should maybe keep it since we've already have been using it and just maybe just call it Bob and Carlene Allen Heritage Room. Be just because we have, we love to call it Heritage Room and I, I don't want to keep getting corrected. <laughs> <laughs> so, if anybody has another suggestion or any, um, thank you for your input. Yeah, would you like the Bob and Carlene Allen Heritage Room? Is that what you like? The I best? would like that myself personally. If anybody else has a different thought, okay. if you'd like, you can make a motion and okay. we can go from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to rename the. Room uh, Bob and Carlene Allen Heritage Room. And I need a second. Do we have a second? Can I say something before a second? We need a second before we discuss. Uh -huh. Unless there's no second, then it's dead in the water. <laughs> yeah, then it's dead in the water. But I can ask again. So. Okay, so the motion. Um, the motion does not pass for the lack of a second. So you may discuss. Mm -hmm. I would just like to make a motion to revisit this once I know more. I'd like to know how um, the process of renaming it, how, ex how extensive that will be, um, and then just revisit this in the next meeting or next two meetings. Okay, you want time to yes. look into it? Yes. Okay, well, what's another month? <clears throat> if that's okay, you guys have postponed this for four four meetings now. Yeah, we've been talking well, about this what's I wonder January. if Roger, the staff member, can answer questions that you have as far as the naming of it. Okay. It was named five years ago by the city council based on suggestions provided by the parks and recreation director. Mm -hmm. Right. You mean the Bob and Carlene Allen part? The uh, whole the whole named. name. The whole name before the before everything was moved there. Oh, okay. The the, the naming the room was yes uh, suggested, and there was and a lot involved with that, from what I understand. They approved it. So, well, make a motion if you want to do something. Um, I would just like to make a motion to revisit this. Um, or do you want me to ask questions now? Mm-hmm. You can ask questions. How, how hard is it to rename this building? So, of course, the city council uh, makes the final action on it. Um, they will consider a name that's recommended by this commission. Um, you know, I don't, uh, we try not to speculate on what the city council, you know, how they vote, but I, I don't, I doubt that there would be a lot of opposition to, you know, one of these names. I mean, it, as long as you're, re, you're retaining uh, the, the Allen's name, which um, I think is their most important priority. Um, it's like there's a sign that needs to be changed or anything like that? The sign change would occur uh, after, the, after council action. And the sign is on the front of the building? Right now it says Bob and Carlene Allen Auditorium, I think. Oh, so it has to change anyways? Or eventually? Yeah. yeah. Okay. For, for the outside? Well, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, that would be up to... Has council been made aware that we're in the process of changing the name or thinking of some suggestions to change the name? I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't believe so. Well, seems that you've been on it for five years, I would like to go back to your motion and um, I withdraw my motion and I want to go ahead with your motion because I didn't know that the name on the front was n not what it is anyways. So okay. um, being that you've been on the commission, I'm going to trust your decision on this. Okay. Well, that's yeah. fine. I mean, you feel free to interject whatever you want, whatever <clears throat> you want. Now, do we have to vote on the motion that she... Can she make the motion again? Yeah, she's already noted that she's withdrawing. Withdrawing, so okay. Yeah. Okay, would you like to make the motion? No, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I'd like to make a motion to rename the Bob and Carlene... To 
to recommend. <laughs> uh, the Bob and the Carleen Allen Heritage Room. And can I get a second? I'll second. Okay. Madam Chair, can I make a suggestion that sure. um, it's a little ambiguous as it stands. It's not the Allen's heritage. If we could insert the word Norco in there before heritage, so that it read Bob and Carlene Allen Norco Heritage Room, I think it would be clearer. I agree. And then with that, again, I, I would just like to say that there are a lot of Norco places that are named after other people. So it being named after other people does go along with Norco. Mm -hmm. um, just like, you know, like I said, like Ingalls Park and um, the park on Fifth Street. Um, there are lots of centers that are named after certain people. Um, I, I think it, if it was... If you're wanting to make it clear, having Norco in there would be good, but I wouldn't want to maybe, I don't want to say disrespect what they've already put together. Um, mm -hmm. So That's I'm a good point. Both are just really good saying. Okay, so um, do I need to make another motion? Um, you can restate your motion too okay. if you want to change Thank it. Thank you, Chuck. For now, we'll have it. Uh, we'll recommend Bob and Carlene Allen Heritage Room. Can I get a second? A second. Okay, so you'll leave it just as, as the the Allen's Heritage Room, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I oh. get both. I get I get both points. <laughs> but we've been really at this for a long time, and if it doesn't work out, we'll change it again. Okay, so I will do a roll call vote. Chair Edwards. Yes. Commission members Ball? Yes. And Mendoza? Yes. Thank you. Motion passed 301. Yay. Okay. Now we have another staff report. Um, I believe that's from Roger also. Yes. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. This is a kind of a housekeeping item. Uh, now that we're, you don't have a full commission, but you have a much fuller commission than you did. Uh, so it's a good time to um, uh, receive uh, volunteers for the two, your two respective commission, uh, committees, subcommittees, the uh, collection of, collections advisory subcommittee um, and the uh, outreach committee. Let me remind you the collections advisory committee is designed to oversee the storage, transfer, display, maintenance, and cataloging of the collection. So it's very much a, um, it, it's the, you can call it the infrastructure of the collection, so to speak, where there's the outreach commission, uh, the outreach uh, subcommittee is really uh, outward bound. It's designed to communicate to the public what the commission uh, is doing and what the commission's mission is. So one, one is more of an internal process uh, and one focuses more obviously outreach uh, focuses on the community. So it takes a, a slightly different passion, slightly different skill set possibly. So with that, um, you can take, uh, you can take volunteers or uh, if you don't have volunteers, you can appoint people. Okay. Well, the Collections Advisory Subcommittee is something that I've been working on for quite a long time. And I feel very uh, passionate about that. I uh, also have a really good working re relationship with, with Chuck. Um, and I believe Carolyn is, who's on that? If I may, Chair, yeah. uh, Carolyn did provide a comment, being that she was not able to do that. She can't vote, but she can provide comments. Yeah. And she did send a note stating that um, her preferred appointment would be, if possible, the Collections Advisory Subcommittee. Okay, that's fantastic. And I did have a comment on your previous item, and I apologize, I forgot oh, sure. to read that. 
but basically what she voted on is what she chose as well. Okay. The Bob and Ellen Heritage Room. So thank oh. goodness. I oh. feel bad. I missed that. I apologize. That's okay. <laughs> no problem. Okay, that's good. Um, so yeah, for those reasons, and Carolyn actually is, uh, she uh, was, uh, has been a journalist and a photographer. She's got a special kind of a job there being the, the uh, uh, photog uh, photographic uh, uh, person that's going through the photos. She's already started projects and things, so it'd be great if we could just keep her there. The outreach committee, I, you know, I, I think you would be perfect. Yeah, for I'd it. like to volunteer myself <laughs> for the out, the outreach committee. Okay. And also um, items for future consideration. And then, um, what's the cultural resource consultant? What does that entail? Would, that's Bill. That's that's working with. Would that be working with you? Okay. Do you want to tell her a little bit about what you do? Well, the idea of the outreach committee is to be kind of a liaison between the commission and the public mm -hmm. and deal with issues that have to do with uh, the broader interest of the, uh, of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we were looking at before things got really haywire around here, we were looking at um, ways to uh, inform property owners who have uh, property that is eligible for historical designation. Well, that means that they know that and give them an opportunity to designate the property if they want to. Uh, we didn't get very far with that. Mm -hmm. That's an example of the kind of okay. thing that we need to do. Okay, I would like to volunteer myself for that one as well. I think with my background, I mean, I, I'm on. I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce. I've lived in Norco my whole life. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that any type of outreach would be good for me in that on a subcommittee like that. Um, all the internal stuff you're so familiar with, so I'm totally fine with that. Do we have to fill out every committee? Um, with two people? We should, yeah. Okay. So So everyone has a chance to, to do their bit. Right. Okay, so I can I'd volunteer myself for um, three committees. The outreach subcommittee, the cultural resource consultant. No, the outreach oh. subcommittee is all that you're that's just you. Well, yeah, it falls under and the whoever outreach. else. That's just? Yeah, the outreach subcommittee uh -huh. is the subcommittee that you would be serving on. By yourself. With, with whomever else wants to serve on there. Right. And Mr. Wilkman assists you with some of the Right. Stuff. So that's just that is what you're voting right. on. Right. Okay. <laughs> and all those things fall under the... Oh, we're not picking ourselves in, we're not dividing ourselves up into subcommittees? This is two. Just two. Yeah. It's just the two. You, okay. Yeah, the, the descriptions were provided on your staff. Report. The two of you yeah. would be would be help assisting Bill with all those things there. Um, and he's he's but he's not a slave driver or anything. <laughs> he's not going to load you down. You've met the real me. You'll have time for a life. So it's just a few special projects that we that we've been meaning to get to. And like you said, being the, um, the chair of the uh, chamber, you're so perfect for, for we this. Yeah, because we also run, we are the Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center, so yeah. it is a good place to um, put information and you, you know, already in the Visitor know Center. So much. You already know it a lot. So who else would like to volunteer for the Outreach Committee? <laughs> 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 I'll volunteer as well. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Gabriel. So are you okay with everything that Bill explained? And he he yeah. can help you. He he will guide you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he will the, guide the, you. the description on the staff report is what has been said as to what you do. So it's not like you're gonna be doing a whole lot more than what you're doing here bi monthly. It's just a few extra meetings here and there. Uh, at your convenience, you know, whenever you guys are available to me on whatever subject may be, maybe the commission wants to do something, so they'll reach out and say, okay, subcommittee, 
can you look into this? We'd like to do this, whatever. So that would be you guys would get together and, and decide, you know, kind of decide on things. And then you bring it back to the commission. So the commission as a whole makes the final decision. So there's no decisions made as a subcommittee other than what you want to suggest or report back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Yeah, because we'll say something to you like, hey, can you guys check this out, whatever it is, you know, and then you come back and tell us what you find. And then we all vote on it as a group, but we have, um, you know, it is historical preservation. So like Bill said, we're, that's our focus. And um, the, the, uh, the project for historical homes is something that we've been wanting to do a long time and maybe give some of the owners of those homes the information and there's things that they can uh, benefit from, right? Yeah. Uh, they could designate their home historical and so on and so on. You might have to contact those people. Also, I know that you wanted to train those, uh, some, maybe some people in at the at the planning desk or whatever, so they have knowledge of historic right. homes. Right. Right. So there's yeah, there's a lot of things to do. Okay, so I will make a motion to um, to nominate Jamie and Gabriel for the outreach subcommittee. Can I get a second? Go ahead and do the whole and the other subcommittee oh and also uh, myself mm -hmm. and Carolyn for the collections advisory subcommittee okay I'll second thank you all right thank so you, we have a motion it. second uh, so chair Edwards and vice chair Morse are to serve on the collections advisory subcommittee mm -hmm. and commission members Ball and Mendoza will serve on the I outreach subcommittee Roll call vote. Chair Edwards? Yes. And commission members Ball? Yes. And Mendoza? Yes. Thank you. Motion passed 301. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Commission member questions of staff. Discussion item two. You're down to six now. We're down to six? Yeah, subcommittee, subcommittee. Oh, we're already consultant. done with that? Yeah, we're all the way down there. Wow, okay. Okay, real good. Zipping along. Yeah, we are. <laughs> that's good, taking care of business. Uh, collections advisory subcommittee, that's me. All right, I just have a few notes here. Uh, first thing I wanted to tell you is that we, our printer has died officially and Matt came, thank you for sending Matt over. So he came over uh, and diagnosed it as, as useless. He gave us a recommendation for a printer that he found on Amazon. It's a refurbished printer. And uh, we printed out the, uh, the information for, to, to submit to you. Okay, and then the other thing that he recommends is uh, just a little something extra. It's a uh, um, <clears throat> Wi-Fi booster because I guess the Wi-Fi is in Crystal's office and we, it's not getting to us. So I have these two things for you after the meeting. Sure. Okay, and Matt uh, is also helping us set up a couple of donated computers uh, he looked at them. We've been trying to get them up and running for uh, data processing. And he came in the other day and he looked at both of them and he was like, that's it? And he said that neither one of them were going to be able to accommodate us because they had no Windows 10. They're so old. So he said there are some computers in the city surplus he was going to try to get us some of those. He said he might be able to get us three. I don't know, he talked to you? No. Okay. So he said he's going to look for three computers at the surplus, city surplus that have Windows 10. So we can have up and running database, uh, data stations. They're, we're calling them workstations. So that everybody can be entering the data that we, go, we process every week. Right, right. Well, you know what, we've, uh, what we did was we kind of split the hours. So 
Gabriel came in in the morning, and uh, and then you know Car Carolyn will come in for the last couple of hours or something. But we're we're very aware of that. Thank you. <coughs> um, we also got permission from Crystal uh, to to um, go back to our original hours of 12 to 4. All this time since March in the whole COVID thing, we've been working 9 to 12. And so now we, with her help, we uh, got it approved because she's the, the gal that runs that place. She said 12 to 4 is okay. And she's already arranged it with her staff and everything, just to let you know. So this Friday will be our first Friday back to our old schedule, 12 to 4. And it's just easier for everybody. Um, and I told you about the Wi-Fi. We did talk about, and I did send an email uh, to request from you, Roger, something that we really uh, want, and this is also with Crystal, discussing it with Crystal, about the issue of a separate alarm system for, for that room because we come, we, she's got to be there. If we want to be there, she's got to be there, or she's got to arrange staff to be there. And it's just kind of a, you know, it's hard to coordinate everybody. It's inconvenient for her. And uh, something that we just would like to ask for. I'm not sure if you got the email or if you looked into it at all. Well, I received the email. I looked into it. Um, I discussed it with um, Brian Petrie, who's the deputy city manager, and he handles all the facilities. Um, so, no, we, we, we actually discussed this at staff meeting the other day. Oh. So, um, but he wants to wait until he, he um, you know, there may, maybe he'll get an entirely new system for the building. Hmm. And at that point, it would be sometime after the first of the year, uh, at that point, uh, he'd be able to consider a separate system for, for the room. So I don't want, I don't want you to have uh, real high expectations because nothing firm was set right. but it's it, it definitely will be considered at it you know at the time when they evaluate the entire building system okay fair enough makes sense we just got to get it out there so we can begin talking about it things take time all right and then the other thing i wanted to uh let you guys know about was we had a visitor Last Friday, uh, there was a gal that was running around. She was a film rep for the city. We didn't catch her name. She didn't have any cards left to give us. But apparently, she was running around filming uh, things around the city for f a f possible film. Yeah. So if I can interrupt. Uh -huh. um, yeah, her name is Linda Kai Gorman. OK. She's a professional location scout, and she's a consultant to the city. Um, she has helped us uh, recruit um, a lot of commercial projects uh, to be filmed in Norco. And, uh, you know, she has a really good network in the industry. Mm -hmm. And especially when, when L.A. was shut down, uh, producers were looking for alternate locations. And right. we, she arranged a, um, a Walmart commercial um, at Norco High and a couple others so she's uh, and she's trying so she was filming these sites to so she could promote them on oh. on various websites you know did she help kevin get in that super bowl commercial <laughs> <laughs> oh that was very that's neat you know she came in she was really interested in uh yeah. in our space she's a very nice lady yeah she was she's really uh, kind of energetic so anyway that's all i got i have um something for later but and then, okay, who's next? Uh, I forget my paper. I think the cost. Consultant? Uh, uh, cultural outreach subcommittee, we have nothing. 
not right now, but we will when you guys have. Okay, that'll be your spot. Uh, cultural resource consultant. Okay, yes. Um, there's, there was a decision not to have a September meeting with the Navy. Uh, they didn't feel there were any items that needed to be discussed, so they canceled the September um, stakeholders meeting. Um, I have received um, some good plans for building 205, the Shopers Quarters, and um, they're just doing an excellent job with that building. It's going to be transformed and brought back to what it was when it was originally built. So real pleased with, uh, with what they're doing with that building. Uh, the Egg Ranch project is going to go to the City Council on October 7th. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm guessing it'll probably be a live stream mm -hmm. meeting as they have been typically all along. So um, commissioners will want to be um, ready with your emails in support of the uh, recommendations. Mm -hmm. And anybody else that you know who might uh, want to support the uh, mm -hmm. nomination would, would be a or the mitigation measures would be uh, very, very helpful. Uh, let's see. You get, I'm sorry, do you get to give your presentation with your Yes, I'll give, I'll give the PowerPoint at that okay. meeting. Yeah. Um, just to let you know, too, uh, I reviewed a um, cultural resources evaluation for a project at 3rd and Hamner, and that'll, if, that, if that goes any further, that'll be coming to the commission. So um, you might want to just be, uh, be aware of that. And that's all I've got. Okay, I have a question for you. Um, okay, you can ask it later. It has to do with what he does. It's the um, the uh, CGLA uh, course that I found. No. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Because we have to train. Yeah, that could be outside of Okay. Okay, that's all you have. Co uh, collections management consultant. As uh, Chairwoman Edwards indicated, we're looking at additional computers so that ultimately we'll have three to four workstations and uh, people in those workstations will work on their individual uh, collections. At the present time, we're processing the material we have from the prison, which is not a large collection, but it's a good collection to get started on. Um, also, we're continuing to process the photos, negatives, from the Pony Express collection, and we're beginning to start uh, work on the Chamber of Commerce materials that we have in the collection. In addition to that, we're doing some interfiling of things that uh, come up. Anytime you do process and you find things that, you know, you don't know where they go, as they go on, you find out, well, you have more things, and so you've got to interfile those with the larger ones if you establish record groups or series within a record group. So that's basically where we stand with processing. Uh, I would suggest at this time, uh, in relationship to processing, that the newly established Collections Advisory Committee devote its first object of work to uh, working with the deaccession material. The current procedures for deaccessioning are, I take a look at these and determine how closely they, might, they uh, align with the uh, mission of the uh, history group. Uh, and if I think that they are available or should not be in that, uh, and sometimes this means there are unrelated materials. Sometimes it means there's just a whole lot more than we need. We don't need 10 copies of a program for Horse Week, for instance. Two or three would be fine. So as a result, we have maybe three or four cubic feet of material that are, uh, have been, I have determined as deaccessioning. The procedure says they then go to the Collections Advisory Committee for their review. Uh, if they're in agreement with this, then it comes to this board for their consideration. Uh, and at that point, then, if they deaccession, it uh, goes from there. And uh, Diane, I believe at that point, we would probably do the paperwork that got them out of the city's uh, ownership. 
and uh, we can see where well, you know there be various things, and I'll make various suggestions as to how I would like to see them uh, deaccessioned. Correct. Once you have that list, that last step for you would be to provide a list to the city clerk's office. Right. The, the list would and come at to. At that point, uh, the city attorney and the council. Oh, no, the city attorney does a final review. And then once it's approved, then you can then you can dispose of those okay. items. Yeah, and the list, of course, would come to the commission here first. Right, right, right. Then yeah, after you do all those other right. steps that you mentioned, definitely. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You may recall that, uh, oh, gee, maybe almost a year ago now, we did some UV shielding on the upper portion of the windows in the building. What we didn't do was shield the lights within the building. And as a result of that, we end up with things that, I would say look like this, except for the fact that you can hardly see this. Uh, this is not original material. They did not come from a collection. This was a, a shot that uh, we picked up off the internet, but it was part of the exhibit we have on the uh, cultivator that is part, of, is part of the collection. So what we need to do, obviously, and this was done uh, when we first did the uh, open house, so that's maybe two, perhaps three years ago at most. So this isn't uh, long term uh, in those terms. So what we need to do is get shields for the uh, fluorescent lighting bulbs, and uh, these are readily available, uh, and uh, have them installed so that you don't have that lighting come down or uh, the alternative would be to get uh, sheets of uh, UV and put it in the, uh, in the uh, lights uh, themselves. Either way uh, would work. Uh, shields would probably be uh, preferable. Uh, and then, of course, we'll need to redo the photos themselves. Um, I, I think at the time we did this, we were in something of a hurry, so I don't think we did uh, particularly uh, solid work on it in terms of putting it on good paper and such, uh, we would do that now with the idea that they would be longer term than they were when we first uh, developed that particular portion of the exhibit area. I think that's probably uh, about it. Um, if we can move forward with those things, we should be in good shape. Okay, thank you. Yeah, light is a huge enemy of of artwork and photography. Some places won't even let, allow you to take a flash of a picture in a gallery for that reason. Okay, items for future consideration. I have one. Actually, it's a... Uh, a motion, because it has to be voted on by all members. Oh, my... I'm, I, so I say on my, I would like to make a motion on an item for future, future consideration yes. mm -hmm. at a future meeting. Did I, can I get a second? No, what is your motion? Oh, for what? You need to provide the subject oh, item. Oh, I have to tell you what it is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it's the question of heat. In our room, we have no heat for winter and we had no heat for winter last year. Okay, and that's an issue you just bring up with staff. It's not an issue for the commission to discuss. For a future consideration? Yeah, it, no, like ask, you just talk to staff about that. Um, Roger and the deputy city uh, manager as well, who's in charge okay, of buildings. Just requested yeah, it. So that's not an issue or an item that's okay. commission discussion. Okay, I got you. Huh? Okay. No. Or the no. Okay. Does anybody have um, good question? So, anybody have anything else for future agenda consideration? No. All right. I believe that does conclude our meeting, and our next meeting is when? November tenth. November tenth. All right, that's it. Great, thank you all for coming. And this meeting is adjourned at 4.49.